political director and Washington bureau chief Rick Klein is tracking the polling in this neck and neck race. Rick, the candidates, they tried to play to their strength last night. Yeah, good morning, Michael. We talked going into the debate about how much uh, more Harris had to do to define herself, and you saw both candidates trying to l let voters know about where they stood on some of the issues that voters are already predisposed to think they're pretty strong. The big ex example of the night, as, as we discussed, Trump kept going back to immigration and the southern border, and, and here's a big reason why. It is one of the strongest issues he has. He is seen as more trustworthy among, of, among voters by a nine-point margin. Forty-five percent of Americans trust him more than Congress. Kamala Harris on the issue of the border, so that's why he went to it over and over again. On the other side, you saw Harris with some of her stronger moments talking about abortion rights in very emotional and visceral terms, and this is an indication why, of all the issues that we've pulled on with ABC News and Ipsos, we see a much stronger edge for Harris over, over Trump on this uh, the, more than anything else. 47 percent, almost half the country, say she's more trustworthy on abortion rights. That plays directly into the gender gap. We've also talked a lot about this so far in this campaign. It is a big one. Uh, women are 13 points more likely to be supporting Kamala Harris than Donald Trump. So again, this is playing to her strength. So right now, this debate sets up this next two months, and it's not just about appealing to voters who might be on the fence about who to vote for, but whether to vote at all. And that's why you saw the candidates last night playing to their strengths. George? Okay, Rick, thanks.